Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about how we can convert a condensed structural formula into a skeletal formula. Alright, so before we start on this, I'm going to go through some of the rules that we can take uh, to, to draw our skeletal structure. Alright, so the first rule okay, is that we need to start from the left to the right. Alright, so this is how you can read a condensed formula. Alright, we read all the way from the left to the right. Okay, then the second thing that we need to take note is the parentheses. So we have three groups with parentheses here. So we need to know what uh what these parentheses mean. Alright, so it can either be a repeating unit, okay, or it can be a substituent. Alright, so what do I mean by repeating unit? Sometimes you will see this subscripts two. Right, it means that there are two of it, two of the same substituents attached to the same uh, group. All right, either that or it is a repeating unit. So there are two of these CH2 groups in between. Okay, and the thing for you to take note is that CH3 is a terminal group. So if you take a look at this molecule, uh, this segment here and this segment over here, this should be your terminal. All right, so terminal means they are at the two ends. All right. Then the next thing that we need to look at is this CH2, all right? And we know that CH2 should be within the molecule. Okay, so what we need to do next is re really is to draw out all the bonds, all right? It, which is what we are going to do now, all right? So we are going to connect the main chain first before drawing out all the bonds. So let's identify what the main chain is. So the main chain is from this carbon, from the terminal carbon. Since we said that this is a repeating unit, so there are two of these connected together. It should connect to another carbon. Okay, and this carbon should connect to another carbon in most cases. All right. And then lastly, we know that there are two of these at the end, at the other end. So how do we connect them together? Okay, I what I would do is I would connect these three to this one and to this one first all right i'll treat this as a substituent group all right you can you can uh this is this would be the easiest way to tackle such a question so if i start first i know that i have one carbon here two carbons here fourth carbon fifth carbon all right so my main chain should have fifth five carbons all right so let me count one two three four and five all right, just ensure that you have five carbons. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is we want to fill in all the bonds. All right, so what we want to do is let's try to fill in all these hydrogen atoms. Okay, CH3 at the end, one CH2, one CH2, one CH, and one OH. And then at this point, I have one hydrogen. I have two CH3 okay and the last part over here is for me to remove all my hydrogen atoms except for the one that is connected to the oxygen atom okay so step four what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify which are the atoms that I want to keep this carbon this is what I want to keep okay with this OH this CH3 and this CH3 here so I'll redraw this whole uh, skeletal structure it should look something like this. Okay, I, I know it looks like uh, it takes a lot of effort right now. So in the next few videos, I will teach you how you can uh, train yourself to see this, uh, see this structure right away. Okay. All right, so uh, that is it for on how you can draw skeletal structure from the condensed formula. Alright, so before I end off this video, I have two other points that I want to point out. Okay, the first point that I want to talk about is about the ambiguous cases that you might see sometimes. Okay, this time around, we actually have this OH group. Alright, it is very clear from this uh, condensed formula that it is a substituent. But how do we tell that this OH is at, actually at the side? Okay, so we want to look at the number of bonds that oxygen can form and we notice that it can only form it should only form two bonds okay so 
if one of them is used for hydrogen the other one must be connected to one of the carbons and so it's definitely not uh, it's definitely not a case of uh, C O and C as in in ethers all right so this is something that you need to take note so you need to count the number of bonds okay and these bonds would give you a clue as to how you could how you can answer the question Okay, and lastly, you need to know how uh, different functional groups are represented. For example, aldehydes and ketones, okay, they are represented in different forms. Aldehydes are written in the form of RCHO, while ketones are written in the form of R, C, O, and R. Okay, so notice for ketones, uh, we do read it from the left to right, R, C, O, then R. But for aldehydes, we, we go R, C, H, and then we go back again to this oxygen. Alright, so I hope this video is able to help you to understand how you can draw skeletal structures from uh, condensed formula uh, much more easily. Okay, thank you.